Okay, uh, this is Lydia. Welcome to Blueprint Tutorials and today we are going to be looking at the factors that you need to determine in your statistics controlled assessment. This is for the 2014-2015 controlled assessment, the Edexcel one. So, let's begin. The first of the three topics that Edexcel discusses are journeys. So we're going to look at the factors for journeys. So. This is either to or from work and school. So you have, first of all, in all of these, you have some of the more straightforward factors that most people will think about. And then you have the more offbeat ones. You want to consider the more offbeat ones when designing your hypotheses, because this is where you can really get a lot of good anal analytical marks. So the first quite simple one is the distance between your home and either your work and school. The next one is the method of travel that you choose. So that's like bus, train, tube, etc. The next one is the kind of traffic that you might have. Now, this links in with your method of travel. Obviously, if you're taking the tube, then you won't have a traffic issue so much. The next one is the time that you travel, so the time of travel. So if you travel during the rush hour, for example, then you're more likely to see the traffic, which will then also affect your journey. So you need to also think, when you're thinking about factors, how many of them interlink. Now, the more offbeat ones will be ones such as transport links, either at your house or at your home and school. So for instance, if your school is in the middle of nowhere, then it doesn't matter if it's close because it's going to be difficult to get to. Whereas something that's further away, it might just be one tube journey, making it rather straightforward to get to. Another example is family size. So for example, if you have a big family, there's a possibility that um, your, your parents, the parents, might have invested in a car to travel everyone around, in which case maybe you're more likely that might have an effect on the method of travel. Another example is family income. Now, family income, you have to be very, you have to be very careful with topics like this. So factors like these, first of all, they're harder to measure and they're also sensitive. So it's going to be very difficult if you're asking, for instance, another student what their family income is, that A, they will know in great detail, or B, that they'll be willing to share it in great detail. So this is something that you might need to consider, yet you might need to accept that it isn't going to be a measurable target. Another example is the type of school. So the type of school is going to be very important because if you went to, say, for instance, a very strict private school that required you to be in on time, well, all schools require you to be in on time, but were, were, went very heavy on the punishment of lateness, then that's going to affect how you plan your journeys more so than, say, a more relaxed alternative education centre. I mean, you have to, you have to kind of... You have to put aside political correctness sometimes when you're thinking about these factors because all of these things are important and all of these things do have an effect. And the more you look at the more offbeat ones, the more you have the chance of increasing your mark. So this is journeys. Let's take another piece of paper. Now let's talk about the next topic, which is climate. So for climate, we have again some more straightforward ones, such as the time of year. So obviously, climate is a seasonal thing, so the climate in summer is gonna be very different from the climate in winter. The country, here we see the climate in Jamaica is gonna be very different from the climate in the UK. The city you're in, so for instance, that also will have dependency on the country. So for instance, in a big country such as France, the north of France will be considerably different from the south of France. Whereas in a smaller country, 
this might not be so much of an issue. So you need to, again, look at the interdependencies of factors. Another example is the landscape. So if it's a mountainous or hilly region, then you're more likely to get relief rain once it comes over the mountains. So there's the mountains, there's the clouds. Once it comes over the mountains, I mean, I'm not a geography teacher, but relief rain is more likely. So obviously the landscape and the topography will have an effect on the climate. Once again, we're going to come under here and we're going to have a look at some stuff that's a bit more off, off, off the beaten path. So one example of this is the lunar cycle. I'm going to stop here and just say, when you choose your factors, they don't have to be known, proven factors. As long as you can argue a reason why you think this, is, this has an effect, then that's something you can... The point of this... The point of this assessment is for you to investigate the effects. So you don't have to have predetermined knowledge of what the effects are, otherwise the investigation is a bit pointless. So lunar cycle, we know that those affects tides. So the cycle of the moon obviously affects the tides. So you can then argue with that, well, if it already has an effect on water in that manner, then maybe it has an effect on the climate. And that's something you can then say, I want to investigate. Another example is pollution. So we know that with global warming, we know that pollution has an effect on the ozone layer, which then has an effect on global warming, which then has an effect on the climate, i.e. everything gets much hotter. Obviously, this is an oversimplification, but we can see that there's an effect there. So you can then say, I want to look at every time a new large-scale industrial place is open and I want to compare that to the climate in the months before and after that large-scale industrial site is open. That's something that you can do. Another example, uh, off the beaten track example, is policy. So you can say, and these together is, you can say, is the impact of global warming, affects in are related to the impact of global warming. So you can say every time, for instance, a new green policy comes out, maybe people initially are more conscious of global warming and then they might take steps to reduce it and then that might have an immediate but short-lived effect on the climate. So that's something you can also look at. Once again, none of these things you can, you can say in specific, with, with definitiveness, once you finish, that, yep, these definitely have an effect and these are what the effects are. But beginning to piece together arguments about why this could affect it and how you would then go about finding some kind of method to analyse it, like, oh, I'm going to look at all the policy documents and then I'm going to look at the climate in the three months surrounding it. Stuff like that where you have to kind of have higher order thinking these are going to improve, greatly improve your marks than if you say, I'm going to compare the time of the year against the climate, because you kind of know what you're going to expect. There's only so much analysis you can do with that. Whereas the more off the beaten track factors, they are a lot more interdependent. So there's a lot, there's a lot more scope for you to go with it. There's a lot more scope for you to have control groups. There's a lot more scope for you to then, within the factor, then start grouping things. So you can have variables within variables. So the IQ is going to be something that's going to be difficult to quantify. However, you can say, I am going to use a proxy of the national curriculum levels in place of IQ. You can then argue that although this is maybe more innate or more natural, or maybe something that you're more born with, whereas this is something that nurture has a bigger effect over, you can say that this would lead into this, but also maybe that game playing and puzzle playing, there's a learnt element to it, which maybe makes it a closer fit to the national curriculum levels. I mean, these are all things, once you start opening yourself up to all the possibilities, you can make stronger arguments, more cogent arguments, more in-depth analysis that can get you better grades. So, let's look at 
let's look the same. Let's look again at some of the factors that, let's look again at some of the factors that are off the beaten track. So examples of this are the type of phone that someone has. So if they have maybe perhaps a more up-to-date current smartphone, maybe they'll be more they'll be more open or they have more access to a wider variety of games, maybe making them better game players. Um, another one could maybe be how many how much extracurricular activities they do. So extracurricular activities they do. So for instance, if they don't do much activities outside of their work or their study, then they might have more free time in which that they then go on their phone and play those games, thus giving themselves more practice. Another example is whether or not they do sports, which would build up their hand-eye coordination and their dexterity. Speaking of dexterity, another one is hand size. So for instance, if the game is particularly fiddly and they have big kind of clubbish hands, then it's gonna be very difficult for them to properly have enough dexterity to properly manipulate the game. So here are some examples of what I call both common factors and more offbeat factors. Now, while it's important for you to note as many common ones as possible, try your best to start thinking of some more offbeat ones. This is where you can really see an improvement in your grades. This is where you can really start accessing the A stars, the A's and the B's. Okay? All right? So, once again, as a reminder, this is a blue pen tutorial by Lydia and we just covered factors in the statistics controlled assessment. All right, thanks for watching and see you next time.